So let's have a look at some example schedule variance and cost variance graphs that, uh, that we might see. Because the pattern that we see in these graphs can give us some important information about the project. In this first example, the cost variance is negative. We're spending too much money. But the schedule variance is positive. We're ahead of schedule. Now, these two things could be linked. Uh, are we actually working overtime when we don't need to? Uh, workers very often like to work overtime to get that extra money. But in this case, we're ahead of schedule. We don't need to. We are over budget. We need to save some money. But it's OK. We've got time. We can slow down our work. Maybe we could bring something in from a contractor that's expensive, do it in-house where it's cheaper, because we need to save some money and we need to slow down the work. We're ahead of schedule. In this example, it's the opposite. The cost variance is positive. The schedule variance is negative. We're falling behind on the schedule, but we're not spending money fast enough. We're underspent. Now, if you see this happen on a project, it could be an indication that the resources are the issue. If the resources aren't available, they're not doing the work. And if they're not doing the work, they're not getting the money. So these things could be related. This pattern in your cost and schedule variance graph could indicate a resource issue. Now, in this case, the cost variance and the schedule variance are both positive, which means we're under budget and we're ahead of schedule. Now, some project managers think this is an ideal place to be. However, I would argue that finishing early and under budget is not finishing on plan. And a project manager should finish on plan. If you finish early and under budget, the senior manager is going to have a surprise. Maybe he could have used the money for something else. Maybe he hasn't got anything for resources to do because you finished early and everything's wasted. So if your cost and schedule variance graphs are doing this, you're ahead of schedule, you're underspending. Have you forgotten something? Um, have you not entered a cost? Were your original plans too pessimistic? So this is going to give you some learning for the next project to be a little bit more optimistic. If we're not careful, if we finish this project early and ahead of schedule, next time we do a project, the senior manager will cut our budgets and our time. This final one is the disaster scenario. We are uh, behind schedule and we're overspending. So both graphs are going negative. Um, the problem here is that we need money to catch back on the schedule, but we're overspent. Uh, we need to save money, but we're behind schedule. If your project is showing these sorts of characteristics, we need to go and speak to the senior managers. Really, the only way of getting this project back on plan is perhaps to delete some of the functionality, remove some of the tasks, or to ask for more budget or more time to do the project. But at least, you know, we're only a third or halfway into the project. There's time to take corrective action. And this might be a typical project. Look, it doesn't really matter where the cost and the schedule variance graphs go, as long as they end up at zero, which means on plan. So in this project, initially too little money was being spent, and we fell behind schedule. Uh, but we noted it. We sorted out the problem. We allocated the correct resources, and we got back to plan. So we need these information, the schedule variance and the cost variance, to really understand where we are on the project. In one of our previous examples, we had um, a budget that said £42,000 and an actual that said something like £60,000. So if your plan is to spend 42 and your actual is 62, that sounds like you're 20,000 pounds over budget. The missing piece of information is the value of the work that has been achieved, the performance or the earned value. Now, if that, for instance, was 52,000 pounds, then our schedule variance is the difference between the budget and the earned value, plus 10. And the cost variance is the difference between the actual and the earned value, negative 10. So reporting on a project that says I've actually spent 62 and the plan was to spend 42 
doesn't tell you how much work you've achieved. Saying that the schedule variance is 10 positive, I'm ahead of schedule, but I'm a little bit overspent, 10 negative, sounds a much better situation to be in. So let's define some of these terms. The budget is the same as the plan. It's what we think we're going to be spending on the project. The budget of completion will be the total authorised budget. The actual is how much you have actually spent as you go through the project. The performance is the same as the earned value, it's the same term. It represents the value of the work that you have completed. So in the previous example, how many bricks have you done? What's the value of that work? That is the performance or the earned value. And that can be different from the budget. It could be different from the actual. Now, the schedule variance is the difference between the earned value and the budget. So it's the performance minus the budget. The cost variance is the difference between the earned value and the actual. So the performance minus the actual. I'm now going to introduce some different terms for schedule variance and cost variance and earned value. And I'm doing it for a good reason, as you'll see in the next slide. Um, sometimes you relate to the budgeted cost of work schedule. That's the plan, the BCWS. Or we could talk about the cost of work performed, the earned value, the value of the work, the BCWP. Or we could talk about the actual cost of work performed, the actual cost, the actual costs, ACWP. The reason for introducing these terms is that if you go to Microsoft Project, you can actually switch on the earned value tables. And in the database of Microsoft Project, you will see columns for BCWS, BCWP, ACWP, the budget, the earned value, and the actual. And Microsoft Project can calculate the schedule variance and the cost variance. And you'll see there there's uh, EAC and VAC, which we'll look at in a minute. So actually, you can go to Microsoft Project and get a little bit of help on earned value analysis by turning on the earned value tables. And it's just different terminology. The schedule variance is, is still the BCWP minus the ACWP, the earned value minus the actual. Now, an important thing to consider for cost variance and schedule variance is these are the differences. They're pounds minus pounds, so the units of pounds. So we will, might have a negative pound value for cost variance, that means we're overspending. Or a negative pound value for schedule variance, that means we're behind schedule. And if we're positive, we're underspending ahead of schedule. Now, sometimes these figures can sound very large. Uh, imagine this situation where the project is late and uh, uh, over budget. And I'm going into a, a meeting with management uh, and say my total budget is a million pounds for this project. And I'm reporting that my cost variance is negative 100,000 pounds. And my schedule variance is a negative 100,000 pounds. And you can just imagine one of the senior managers at that meeting saying, this is terrible. 100,000 pounds, you're fired. It sounds really bad. A way of avoiding this, of cheating the senior management, is not to subtract the figures, but hide the sizes by using the, the relative performance, divide them. And this would give us a cost index and a schedule index, where one means on target. So instead of the schedule variance being the performance minus the budget, we say the schedule performance index is the performance divided by the budget. Now, these would be pounds divided by pounds, so these are ratios. And a ratio of one means we're on plan. The cost performance index is the earned value divided by the actual. Now, going into the same management meeting on my million pound project, reporting the same project at the same status, I don't say my cost variance is negative 100,000 pounds. I say my CPI is 0.9, my SPI is 0.9. 
Point nine, say the senior managers, very good, carry on. It's the same project, but it just hides that, that tension of having £100,000, which is a lot of money. Now, the ETC is the estimate to complete. Uh, the senior managers will be very interested here because you're halfway through the project. They're going to say, how much money to finish? Especially if you're over budget already. They'll say, how much money do you need? What's your ETC, your estimate to completion? Uh, another one is the EAC, the estimate at completion. So what is going to be the total amount? And we can calculate this estimate of completion in different ways. And uh, if you have a look at the seminar that we do on earned value analysis, we will go through a project looking at its actual and its earned value and its budget through its months. And as we go through the project, different methods for calculating the total become more or less accurate. For instance, at the start of the project, the only thing we have is the remaining budget. There is no actual. So the estimate at completion will be anything we've actually spent plus the remaining budget. Uh, towards the end of the project, this second method becomes more accurate because it's what I've actually spent and the estimate to complete. And then there's two methods to use the CPI. If my current cost performance index is 0.9, I can say, well, my estimate at completion is my original budget divided by that error factor, 0.9. And I can use the current cost performance index, or I could use a forecasted one based on information I know about the future forecast costs. The VAC is the difference between the budget at completion, the plan, and the actual completion target. So, this has been earned value analysis. Uh, it's only required on certain projects. On small, low-value projects, it's not going to be required. But once you start working on big projects or working for customers that insist you do earned value analysis, then it becomes more important. Uh, I've seen government's projects that insist on earned value analysis. And I've worked with consultants who say, well, any project we do that's over a quarter of a million pounds, we must do earned value analysis on. So anything less than a quarter of a million, they don't bother. So short-term, low-value projects don't require earned value analysis. 